Hey there econ students and teachers. In this video we're going to be talking about quantity controls. This is another type of government intervention in addition to taxes and subsidies and price ceilings and price floors. Sometimes a government just sets a physical limit on how much of a good is allowed to be produced by firms. Sometimes this is called a quota. Watch the lesson. You'll see all about how quantity controls create a deadweight loss and result in a misallocation of society's scarce resources. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and head over to econclassroom.com for more great resources for economic students and teachers. We've been studying different ways that governments intervene in the markets for goods and services. In this video, we're going to talk about a different type of government intervention, not price controls, not excise taxes, rather something we call quantity controls. Now there's another word for quantity controls. These are sometimes and often referred to as quotas. A quota is a physical limit placed by the government on the total legal amount of output to be produced in a market. Quotas may serve different purposes. Quotas might be meant to limit the extraction of a natural resource. They might be imposed to protect domestic producers of a good from foreign competition. Whatever the purpose for a quota or a quantity control is, the impact is that it's going to reduce the quantity produced in a market and drive a wedge between the price that consumers pay and the cost of producing the goods to the firms themselves. To illustrate the effect of a quota on a market, we're going to use a real-world example, and that is the market for wild salmon. Salmon, of course, is a fish which could be overfished and therefore could eventually become endangered if it weren't for quotas meant to protect fish populations. So this is a real-world example, and let's look at our graph here on the left. We're going to start by talking about the market in equilibrium without quotas. Remember that the supply of salmon represents the marginal cost to the fishermen of catching the salmon and the demand for salmon represents the marginal benefits to the consumers of salmon. The equilibrium price and quantity are established where the marginal cost equals the marginal benefit and you'll recall that this is also the allocatively efficient allocatively efficient quantity. In other words it's where the cost of catching the salmon equals the marginal benefit to consumers who buy the salmon. All right, let's go ahead and label our areas of consumer surplus and producer surplus in the market without any quantity controls. Recall the consumer surplus, which I'm shading in green, is the area below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price that consumers pay. That represents the additional welfare or happiness of consumers who pay less than they were willing and able to pay. And the producer surplus represents the area below the equilibrium price and above the supply or marginal cost curve. This represents the extra welfare or benefit to producers, fishermen in this case, who are able to sell salmon at PE higher than their marginal cost. So this represents the welfare of producers. Now what happens in this market when the government establishes a maximum quantity of salmon allowed to be caught? In other words, they're going to reduce the quantity to some artificial level below the equilibrium. Let's assume that the government decides to limit the quantity of salmon caught to Q, Q. We'll call this the quota quantity. So the legal maximum of salmon allowed to be caught is now Q, Q. Let's go ahead and show the effect that this is going to have on the market. Essentially, what the quota creates is a new supply curve for salmon. Now, producers are allowed to produce salmon as price increases up to Q, Q, but then supply becomes perfectly inelastic we end up with a situation in which there's basically a vertical section of the supply curve, I'll call this SQ, at which producers are no longer allowed to produce any more salmon than the quantity controlled limit of QQ. So what happens if the price of salmon remains at the original equilibrium of PE? We're now gonna have a situation in which there is an excess demand. There is a shortage of salmon of QE minus QQ because at PE the quantity demanded remains where it was before. Recall from an earlier unit that whenever there's a shortage in a market, the market tends to correct for the shortage by driving the price up, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. But as the price increases, the quantity supplied cannot increase because the supply curve is essentially vertical here at QQ. Therefore, the higher price leads to a reduction in the quantity demanded. We'll see a movement along the demand curve as the price rises to its new equilibrium, label this new equilibrium price here, and we'll call this price PQ. That's the price that consumers are going to pay 
when the supply is limited to QQ. So what's happened here? The area of consumer surplus is clearly going to decrease. Consumers are worse off. There's less salmon available and the price of salmon is now higher. So my green triangle representing consumer surplus is considerably smaller than it was before. Producers on the other hand, they might actually be better off as a result of this quota. Now there's a caveat here. The producers who are able to go out and catch the fish, those who are lucky enough to get a permit to go out and catch the quoted amount of fish are going to be better off because the price that they sell for, which represents the marginal benefits, remember this is now the marginal benefit because demand equals marginal benefit and supply equals marginal cost, the marginal benefit, the price that they sell for is considerably higher than the marginal cost of actually producing that much fish. So the marginal cost is now much lower. We have driven a wedge between the price consumers pay and the marginal costs to the producers of salmon. So the yellow shaded area represents the producer's surplus following the imposition of the quota. So are all fishermen better off because of this quota? Well, definitely not. There's many fewer fishermen able to catch fish now. You can see the quantity supply decreases because of the quota. Certainly many fishermen would be better off if they were legally allowed to participate in the market and catch up to QE salmon. However, the total effect on surplus, the total effect on welfare in this market is clearly negative. There's going to be a loss of total surplus. The white shaded area represents, you guessed it, the dead weight loss. Overall, society is worse off because of this quota. There will be fewer fish caught. The supply becomes vertical at the quota quantity. And of course, the reason for that is that producers are no longer allowed to respond to higher prices. Supply becomes perfectly inelastic. The elasticity of supply equals zero at QQ. Let's go ahead and take some notes down here on the effects of the quantity control, the quota. Consumer surplus is going to decrease. Producer surplus is going to increase, but only for, for producers able to participate in the market. And overall, of course, there is a loss of total surplus. There's a dead weight loss because there will be fewer salmon caught and the price of those salmon will be higher. The market is no longer allocatively efficient. At equilibrium, where we started in this market, marginal cost equals marginal benefit. But as we can see here, at the quota quantity, the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. Society would be better off with more fish caught at a lower price. Now, before we conclude this lesson, let's go over one thing. If quotas lead to such a negative outcome for society as a whole, then why are quotas imposed on markets such as that for wild fish and other raw materials or natural resources that might be extracted? Of course, the purpose of this quota was ultimately sustainability. If the equilibrium quantity of QE was at a level that was unsustainable, this might have been unsustainable, then perhaps the quota quantity of QQ is sustainable. This fish population will be able to endure and able to survive into the future because of the quota. So not all quotas are bad, and that's something that we'll learn in a future unit when we study something called market failure. Some types of goods need to be regulated in order to achieve a sustainable, more socially optimal level of production. Wild fish might just be an example of that, but the impact that this quota has on total surplus can be seen using the analysis we did here. Quotas of other types also are going to create a deadweight loss like quotas on the market for wild salmon. Anytime a quota is imposed below the equilibrium quantity, it creates a perfectly inelastic supply curve at the quota quantity, leads to a higher price, and reallocates surplus from consumers to producers. Once again, not all producers are better off because there will be fewer producers able to participate in the market, but those that do are able to sell for a higher price and enjoy a higher level of producer surplus. Here we go.